Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at Woodpecker's Parallel Guide System. This is an accessory for your track saw, whether it's a Festool track saw, Makita, or Triton. This will give you parallel rips, just like using a rip fence on a table saw. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our videos right when they come out. All right, let's get started. So what I'm working on today is a new stand for my ready alarm saw. Uh, in a lot of my shop furniture, I've used a construction like this. We have a frame with a plywood panel that reinforces that frame. I like that better than just building boxes out of plywood. Uh, and what I've got done so far is I have the frames done and I have the rabbit cut in the back for the plywood. So now we're gonna use the parallel guide system to cut the plywood panels to fit in the back of the frames. I've got four pieces that I need. Now you may wonder, in a shop where I've got three table saws, why am I gonna use a track saw to cut this piece of plywood? Well, the simple answer is I'm working by myself and a five by five sheet of Baltic birch plywood is just awkward to handle on a table saw by yourself. So I'm gonna do the whole thing with the track saw. Now the side benefit to that is if you don't have space for a table saw, you're gonna see that anything that you can do to a sheet of plywood, you can do with a track saw. You might find it hard to believe that something with 55 inch rip capacity is inside this little box, but it's all there. We're gonna start by taking out the first four sections of track and the part that attaches the tracks to our guide rail. We're gonna put those together and calibrate them. Okay, so the first thing to do is to connect two pieces of the track together. Now the first one starts at eight inches, goes to about 20. So we're gonna put the track connector in the back side then we'll slide it into the other one. Get that close. Make sure it's tight and pinch it together. Now, on the other side, our scale is continuous right across the seam. Now, the first time you put this together, you have to mount this bar to this head. Uh, but when I store it, I leave it all together. What we need to do now is make sure that that's loose. And then we're going to take the T-nuts on the back side and slide it into the track. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on these so I'm not chasing them all over the table. The next step is to take our two assembled heads and mate them to our guide rail. Now at this point, everything is loose, okay? And there's a sequence that we wanna follow to make sure that we get this lined up right. Step number one is to tighten the bar that's inside the track to the track. Next, we're gonna tighten the head down to the bar. Okay, what's still loose is this, and we're gonna do that in the next step to get our alignment. So just like calibrating the tape on your table saw, the more careful you are with making sure that the scale here is zeroed out to the edge of your track, the more you're gonna be able to rely on this scale and not have to measure every single thing that you do. Here's how we go about calibrating the scale to the edge of your guide rail. So we're going to start the alignment procedure by sliding two stops into our track. The first stop we're going to bring up to 11 and 5 eighths. There's an arrow right there to help you know that that is the spot for your calibration. We're going to bring that up to our 11 5 eighths and lock it. Now we're going to bring the back one up to 14 and 5 eighths. 
and lock it. So these rods we're gonna use for two different things. One is this calibration step that we're working on now. A little bit later, I'll show you how to use this for narrow ripping. The first thing we're gonna do is take this plastic piece and thread that onto the end. Now we're gonna slide this into our two stops. Once we get it through the stop, there's a little steel button and we're gonna thread that onto the end. Get it tight. Now we're gonna push that up against the back stop and lock it. Now over on this end, the end of this plastic rod should be exactly in line with our guide rail. Okay, so now we're gonna line this up so that they're dead square with each other. I'm gonna take a square, set that on the table, bring it up to the rod, and you can see that I'm way past the edge of my guide rail. So now we're gonna loosen these screws that attach the track, and we're gonna adjust that until the square is touching both the rod and the edge of the guide rail. Then lock it up. Now I like to check that by taking the square, coming away from the stop, make sure I'm against the edge of my guide rail, slide it forward, and that's what I want to see. I want it to just clip it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Now this was really easy with a shorter rail, but the first cut that I need to make, I'm going to need a long rail, but all of my adjustment is the same. All I have to do is slide it out of this rail and put it on the other one. Now like peanut butter and jelly, uh, Laurel and Hardy, a great tool's got to have a great sidekick. And for the parallel guide system, it is the adjustable track square. Now there was a time when we all kind of assumed that when you bought a sheet of plywood, the corners were perfectly square. Uh, particularly with Baltic birch, that just isn't the case. You can see that this one is significantly out. So the first thing we want to do is create a square corner we're going to do that by taking the edge of the adjustable track square, keep the guide rail off the table, make sure that the track square is right on the edge, line up with the edge where you want to start your cut, and gently lower it down. Now you can see that we're barely going to clip the edge here we're going to take close to an eighth of an inch off of the other end. So we've got our first straight edge. The next thing I need to do is make a cross cut all the way across the sheet. Now I did all my setup and calibration with a short rail because it was a lot easier on the workbench. But now, since we have to make a cross cut, I'm going to transfer my parallel guide system to the big track. Don't have to worry about anything. The track connectors are going to make sure that everything stays aligned as I transfer this from the short rail to the long rail. Now just to make sure that nothing changed, I'm going to bring the square down and double check my calibration. And you can see it's exactly in line. Now my first cut is just right at the end of my rail. I need a little bit more to position my stop. So I'm just going to add another section of track. Now we don't need our calibration rods anymore, so we're going to take those out. And I'm going to set my stop according to my cut list, which is 30 and an eighth inches. Now we're going to bring this down until the stops are past the stock, drop the stops, and slide it up until it contacts the edge.
Now that we've got that big cut out of the way, I switched back to my shorter rail and we're going to see the real value of the parallel guide system. I need four pieces all 27 and 3 30 seconds wide. So I've got that set up now, we're going to make the first cut. Now three of these need to be cut down to 23 and 7 eighths in length. So we'll reset our stops to 23 and 7 eighths. Look at that, three pieces exactly identical, perfectly square. That's the power of the adjustable track square and the parallel guide system in tandem. A little earlier, I promised to tell you about the other use for these steel rods besides calibrating the tool. Uh, well, this is for short rips. Uh, let's say that we're out in the field working on a job site and we don't have a table saw. All of a sudden, these piece of trim needs to be two inches wide instead of two and three quarter. Let's take a look at how we can do a perfectly accurate narrow rip with the parallel guide system. First thing we're going to do is slide the rods into the stops. Reset to our zero position. Now we're locked up. And we can move that wherever we need it. We'll do that on this side. Okay, now let's say that we want to cut that to two inches. We have a scale on the inside edge that gives us our narrow readings. So we're going to bring these down, flip them so that they go under the track, and then we're going to set this to our two inch dimension. That's with the back stop, not the front stop, but the back stop. Now we have to support the other end of the rail with a piece of stock the same thickness as what we're cutting. Make sure everything's lined up. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed this closer look at Woodpecker's Parallel Guide System. Uh, we also took a glimpse at the track saw. Watch, in a couple of weeks, we'll do a deep dive into the adjustable track square too. If you haven't yet, I'd ask you to hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our videos right when they come out. And if you like what you saw today, be sure and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.